Hi, and welcome to The Garden Fix. I'm Kristen, and I'm in Western Pennsylvania Zone 6B. And today, we're going to be winter sowing. This is going to be my third year using this method, and I've grown a lot of great plants from it, both annuals and perennials. I'm going to be doing things a bit differently this year, but before we get into that, let's talk about what winter sowing is. Winter sowing is a method used to start seeds outside in midwinter. It's an easy way to start seeds without having to grow them inside and worrying about using grow lights, taking up a lot of space in your home, worrying about fungus gnats damping off and even hardening off when you go to transition them to outside. Winter sowing allows the seeds to wake up naturally when the time is right in spring. It gives them protection from washing away, from blowing away, or critters or birds picking up the seeds or seedlings. And the seedlings will be already hardened off because they've already been exposed to cold temperatures. When you're looking for seeds to start with this method, you want to look for terms like perennial, cold hardy, cold tolerant, self-seeding, or needing cold stratification. So there are many annuals, not just perennials, that can be used with this method. Another benefit over direct sowing in the garden is you have more time to think about where you want to place these plants rather than having to commit to a certain spot if you direct sow. So traditionally with winter sowing you use milk jugs or water jugs that are like a gallon size and you cut them in the middle like three quarters away around and stop where the handle is. Cut holes in the bottom for drainage fill it with about four inches of soil, plant your seeds, tape up the container, leave the cap off, place them outside. There are other options over using the milk jugs and water jugs. You can use anything like salad containers, clear plastic cups that you get from restaurants, plastic baggies, or even a large storage container. This year I've opted for using the storage containers. I haven't used an extra large container because one, it's hard to find containers that are all clear, including clear tops, and two, they tend to be a bit pricey over the ones that are colored. So what I did is purchase several smaller, almost like a little bigger than shoebox containers that have a clear lid. The other thing that I'm using are Jiffy Pots inside, and I'll tell you why. So the reason why I'm ditching the milk jugs this year, number one, is because they're kind of a pain. You have to spend a lot of time collecting them. They're hard to prepare. And then when you're done and you transplant your seedlings out, they're pretty much destroyed so they can't be reused anyway. Number two is the transplanting is very difficult in the milk jugs. In the past, I've gone sparingly on how many seeds I plant per container. And that makes it more difficult to take them out when it's ready to transplant. Now there is what's called a hunk of seeds method where you do sow the seeds very heavily and it pretty much fills the whole container and that creates also a very robust root system so that when you pull it out it comes out of the milk jug easily and you can either leave it in the whole hunk or break it apart as you go to put it in the garden. You might say, well won't that be too many plants? Is that going to create crowding? Not necessarily because it will give you a fuller look and then it's survival of the fittest. So the strongest seedlings are going to push out the weaker seedlings and you'll be left with very healthy plants. So this year, because I'm opting to do the Jiffy Pots, these are biodegradable. So my idea is I won't have to do any transplanting. I can just take these out when they're ready, put them in the ground. Now, you might be wondering, aren't they going to break down too soon? I don't know. Typically, it can take up to a year for Jiffy Pots to break down in the soil depending on where you live and how much moisture you receive. I'm kind of going to keep an eye on that. I'm thinking that I can at least get a few months out of these before there's a problem. But if uh, they do look like they're going to start to disintegrate, I'll just maybe put them inside of a similar sized plastic pot to keep them from falling apart. So let me show you my setup here and how I've prepared these containers. So as I said, these are like shoebox sized containers. You want to make sure that you drill holes at the bottom of the container. That's very important because you don't want them sit the pots sitting in water. You can use a soldering iron, a drill, an X-Acto knife, or even just the tip of a hot glue gun. I have a soldering iron that I purchased on Amazon. It works really well. The other thing is your lid also 
should be full of holes and you want to make sure that your lid of whatever you're using is sturdy enough that water isn't going to collect and make it sink down in the middle and then there's not going to be an even distribution of water. So I've made quite a number of holes in this lid. Next, I've placed in my Jiffy Pots and I've uh, fit about eight in each of these containers and I'm gonna be doing three, so 24 Jiffy Pots total. And the Jiffy Pots don't come with holes in the bottom. So I took an X-Acto knife and I punched some holes. I don't really know that that's necessary because water will drain through these, but I was just thinking for extra drainage, it's not a bad idea. And also the seedlings will be able to send their roots out of the bottom especially when they go into the ground. So other things that you want to have prepared in addition to, of course, your containers are your seeds, water, because we're going to need to pre-moisten the soil, a garden marker. A garden marker is important because if you just use a standard Sharpie, it is going to wear off over the next few months. And then finally, you want to make sure you have your plant tags to label everything that you've started. All right, so we're going to get started with pre-moistening the soil. So today I am using just regular potting soil. This happens to be organic potting soil. You do not have to use seed starting mix because seed starting mix will dry up too fast using this method. So any potting soil will do. I would probably stay away from moisture control for the same reason as the potential to dry out too quickly. And then you really don't need to use like a miracle Grow. You don't really need a lot of fertilizer in your soil. Again, just kind of look for a basic organic potting soil if you can. We're going to pre-moisten the soil. It's best just to get in here with your hands and mix it all up. Just about the right consistency. A bit more. So what we're looking for is to make the soil just wet enough that when you squeeze it, it'll kind of hold its shape in your hand. But if you squeeze it really hard, no water is going to drip out. So this looks about perfect. All right, so I'm going to start filling up the Jiffy Pots. So you want to lightly pack down the soil in the pot, leaving a little bit of a lip. And don't feel like you have to really pack it down. Just lightly tamp it down. One container down, two more to go. So now we start seeds. First off is going to be an annual. I'm planting calendula. Calendula is a, a known to be a self-seeder, so this should be a good candidate for winter sowing. 
I am going to plant a bit heavier than I do normally just to make sure that I have enough um, germination and strong healthy plants. And again, survival of the fittest, the best seedlings will grow out and push the weaker seedlings out. So I'm going to be doing two pots of the calendula here. Now, as a rule of thumb, if the seeds are bigger, then they need to be pushed a little bit into the soil. If they're very, very fine seeds, almost look like grains of pepper, those need to stay on top because they need light to germinate and we don't really press them into the soil. You don't have to pay attention to the seed packet all that much because think about how the seeds grow in nature. They really just fall to the ground. You may have leaves or some other debris uh, cover them, but they're gonna come up on their own. All right, so here we go. So again, I'm doing this kind of thickly, but trying to make sure that they're about as evenly spaced as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect. So there's two methods of doing this. So one, you can just press the seeds into the soil which I am going to gently do that anyway. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to get the bucket again. I'm just barely going to cover the top. Make sure they're all covered. And again, just a very, very light layer. And just like that. All right. To help the seeds settle in more, take a spray bottle with water and then just really saturate the top. Okay. Finally, all that's left is labeling. So let me find my calendula label in here. So I have all of these pre-labeled already. All right. Okay, next is Fragrant Dianthus Lace Perfume. These are very, very fine seeds. So these are ones that I'm just going to mist in and not cover. Golden Hyssop Jubilee. This is an Agastache. Goodness, these are so, so tiny. So again, no need to cover those, just mist them in. This is another Agastache or Korean mint. So we're going to begin the very small seeds.
This is burnet. This is an never grown before. The greens can be used in salad. And they get a burgundy red flower. Okay, these are a little larger, so these will have to be lightly covered. I actually think I might do two of these. So I did end up filling these pots a little fuller to the brim than I said, but they should be all right. Okay, burnet. Right on top. These are cobalt blazing stars or liatris. Actually, plants that I have growing in the garden already. Fluffy little guys. I'm going to go very, very light hovering over them just because they're so fluffy. All right, so the first container is done. I'm gonna set it off to the side, put a lid on it. Next is kind of a rare perennial that I'm excited to try. This is a red gas plant. Now, they do require some patience. They'll take several years to get going but they're a really cool plant when they actually do really nice flowers this is a plant that you can light on fire i don't recommend you do that but that's where it gets its name because of its uh, oils very very interesting little seeds And I'll lightly press those in, light covering. Next is uh, Heirloom Poppies, Lauren's Dark Grape.
Peruvian lilies. These are also known as Alstromeria. Well, that's their botanical name. And these are flowers that you commonly see in floral arrangements. So this is something I have never done before. I'm starting dahlias from seed. And these are border container dahlias, water silk colors, watercolor silks. Second one is called a pollinator dahlia. These are blazing saddles. Next, I'm going to do foxgloves that I have uh, grown from seed before. These were actually my first year winter sowing. Foxgloves are biennials. The first year you just get a plant that really resembles like lamb's ear. Second year they get amazing flower stalks that are about six feet tall. So these are seeds I collected from the garden last year. These are Nigella. Now these are pretty good self-seeders. In fact, they already started to come back out in the garden. So probably not super necessary to do this. However, I can put these in other places. If you end up with too many plants, you can just gift them. So next I'm going to be getting into a few oddities here. These are blue clematis seeds. Clematis seeds are known to be very, very difficult to start. Nevertheless, I am giving it a try. So I'll kind of pick through these a little bit, detach their tails. If you really want to check to see if these seeds are viable, you place them in water and the ones that sink to the bottom are good and the ones that float are not good. Now these can have the potential of taking up to a year to germinate. I have tried them before and not been patient past the typical winter growing season. But sometimes they germinate faster. I actually did have one that germinated last year, but it didn't make it. So, trying again this year with a lot of seeds and we'll see what happens.
All right, so next of the difficult seeds here, this is Jack in the Pulpit. And this was gifted to me out of somebody's yard. And I'm trying a couple different things with these. Um, I have planted them out directly in the yard um, in many, many places. So it's possible that I could get them to come up. However, I thought it wouldn't hurt to also try this method to see if I have any different results. Jack in the Pulpit is another plant you have to be very patient with. It takes a few years to get going, but it is a collector's plant and very worth it. Jack in the Pulpit can be um, very irritating on your skin. The only reason why I'm handling these without gloves is I've already um, kind of washed them up and they've been stored in the refrigerator, so I'm not as concerned, and my hands are kind of covered in dirt right now, so I don't think I should have a reaction, but you never know. So down to two. Next is wisteria, which they're seeds I've collected from my own plant. Of course, wisteria, of course, uh, wisteria, of course, be very cautious with because it can be invasive. These are very, very thick seeds. Normally, when you're starting seeds like this, you want to pre-soak them or nick the casing of the seed to get it to sprout easier. The winter sowing method kind of takes care of that for you, so you don't have to do that because the seed casing will naturally break down. Okay, last one is gonna be a very big experiment. So I was gifted hardy palm seeds from someone in our area that practices zone pushing and can grow palm trees. I forget if this variety is the windmill palm, but it has grown very well for them. And this may be a plant that doesn't go out in the garden, but might be just be a house plant. Uh, certainly growing outside in the summer, though. And they mentioned that their palm trees um, self seed. They have little seedlings coming up below their established trees. So I'm thinking the winter sowing method should be just fine for these guys. So that's it. These containers are now ready to go out in the garden and you do not have to place them in a protected area. Do not worry about them. You do want to make sure they're in the place that receives rain and snow so that the moisture can get in. Now that's the one thing that I will have to do is periodically check on these guys maybe once a week just to make sure that they're not drying out. Now using these shorter more shoebox like containers where there's maybe 
two or three inches above the actual pots. That's gonna cause them to dry out a little bit faster versus if they had closer to that four or six inches like a milk jug would provide for them because essentially you're creating a little mini greenhouse here. So if you're using a container that has less kind of overhead space, you just have to be really careful you don't let them dry out because that can really affect your germination. So let me know in the comments if this inspired you to try winter sowing this year or if you've already tried this method and what successes you've had with it. What kind of plants have you grown? You could even include pictures down in the comments. We'd love to see them. All right. Hold on. Hold on. I got to come in here. <laughs> there. I, for those of you guys who have been watching the channel from the beginning um, and you, you heard me, you heard me say, that um, all the things that I do in the yard, I couldn't do without my wife. She does an amazing job and is involved in so much. And she a, was a little shy about coming on camera. <laughs> and um, so I think she did wonderfully. And you can see how knowledgeable she is and amazing. And hopefully we can convince her to do more videos. <laughs> so um, thank you. Um, honey, that was a really good job. And uh, I'm going to show you now some other things that we have in um, hiding out in our basement. So hiding out in one of the back rooms, um, one of our storage rooms in our basement, um, we have some plants that are uh, overwintering back here. And I want the first thing I wanted to show you was um, this uh, grow light. There's two of them actually that we got from Amazon, um, and they do a nice job. They work on a timer, um, so you don't have to worry about them. Uh, turning them on. And uh, down here, uh, this is one of the things that we picked up at Home Depot uh, not that long ago. It was, it was uh, I don't know, I think it was 75% off. And uh, these are um, Lenten roses, Christmas Lenten roses. Um, and uh, they're really pretty. Uh, the green is showing that they're kind of um, going past their blooms uh, cycle now. Uh, the white ones are what they look like when they are blooming. And um, we're waiting a little while to put them in the ground. Although we probably could put them in now. We're going to wait until spring to get those in. So hiding behind these Lenten roses uh, is a, a ground cover called a wintergreen uh, that is um, very pretty. It, um, in fall, it turns reddish and has berries on it. Very, very nice. And behind it, we have a fuchsia that we'll be bringing out. Tucked over in this corner, we have a Mona lavender that is uh, at least a couple years old now. Tucked away in this corner, we have an Arabian jasmine that's waiting to come outside. And we have a pretty big star jasmine back here as well. Along with his little counterpart down here, another small star jasmine. So there you go. Those are some of the plants we have um, waiting to come out in springtime. Okay, so there's one more thing I wanted to show you, and that's this Mugo pine we have. Uh, we, got, we also got this from Home Depot, and um, we decided that instead of keeping it downstairs where we had it, we, we'd bring it out, and it would be fine out here in a pot. And that'll be planted in spring as well. That way you'll be able to see that go in the ground. Now let's go over here. So here I just wanted to show you where these are going to live for the next few months. And again, all I'm going to do is just monitor that they don't dry out. So please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. That way you can uh, follow along with their progress. And especially when the seeds wake up, that's the most exciting part. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. And make sure to stay tuned. We have a lot more videos coming up. Spring is almost here. So until then, we'll see you in the garden. So should I start again? Yeah. Okay. So that's all oh, for today. My mouth was being funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs>